What I want to do first is I want to do a fill quilt uh, behind this applique that I put on this uh, block on the frame. So let's do some fill quilting first. So we go into pattern quilting and I'm gonna use my laser offset. So if you see down here with my finger, when I'm selecting points, I'm using this little red dot right here. Nothing's associated with the needle. I'm just using this red dot. So I'm going to choose the quilting area and I've sewn out on this sheet of fabric what looks like maybe could be a quilt block with some sashing, because that's what I want to focus on today. So I'm going to select the outer boundary and say done. And yesterday, when it said we had this select inner boundary uh, box, we said no. But today we're going to say yes. We're going to select an inner boundary shape. So we say yes. And I'm going to outline this little hexagon, because I don't want to quilt on top of this hexagon. So I'm going to select points around the hexagon. I'm going to get really close to it and select my boundary points around it. We're going to pretend that this is, you know, this could actually be, you know, we're not going to pretend. This is an applique piece that is actually right now held down with some 505 adhesive and we're going to quilt around it, and then we're going to do a blanket or applique stitch around it to hold it down for good. So I'm going to say done here. I don't have any other boundary shapes. If I were doing an edge-to-edge -edge design, for instance, and I had several of these places to knock out, say it's a tumbler quilt or something like that, and there's, there's a section, say, say it's a fussy cut section or has some words that you don't want to quilt through or a design you don't want to quilt through on the fabric. You can knock out each of those selections along the row. Now, similar to what I said yesterday, when you're selecting your boundary points, you do have to be careful when you're quilting those and you've knocked out those individual things. You do have to be careful because as the quilt eases in and you've knocked out sections along the quilt, um, the fabric is going to move. So you may have to surf the fabric around it, use your hands to make sure that you're going around those, those areas as it's quilting down. But it shouldn't be a problem today. We're just in this one little spot. But I, this is my only boundary shape. I don't want to select any more. Uh, I want to put in, for my background, I want to put in a neat design from Apricot Moon. And I think it's probably, let's see, I think it's this one right here. It's a, a leafy background. Now, I'm going to, for to save some time, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so it quilts out pretty quickly. But this is kind of a neat design to quilt as a background. I'm just going to set it in here. And I'm going to trim to boundary. And this trim feature, uh, when this pop up, this is trimming the outer boundary. Whenever you do an inner boundary, it always trims the inner boundary. So. It's going to trim those boundaries, and I'll say done. And you can see Qbot fixes this and trims everything, and we move to start. It's pretty intuitive on, you know, you're just selecting a boundary, you're selecting what you're going to knock out, you select a design, and then we just press go. Now that design that I selected, that was an edge to edge design that we're going to use as a background fill. You can use any design as a background fill because it's just a design. The Cubot doesn't know, it's just ones and zeros and coordinates to, to the Cubot. So it will place it and whatever is knocked out and it'll knock out that section and it will trim itself to the boundary. So for instance, that edge, to edge design that it's doing right now, and it's as it's going around, you can see it. I guess, it, let's look at here. You can see on the fabric, it's gone around it and it's knocked out around it, but it's filling out the background. Well, that design is this edge to edge design, which is by itself is also a really nice edge to edge. 
Now, as I was saying, if we can go back to the needle cam here, if we're quilting something and this were an edge to edge, and as it comes back to, to the hexagon here, if it was doing something strange, sometimes you have to shift this with your hands. It's just the nature of working with fabrics and battings. For this demonstration, we have a low loft batting and I have you know, a uniform top here. So we don't have a lot of seams. So it should be very tight, as you can see there, very tight to how I've selected those points. But when you're actually quilting a real quilt, it can be that stuff starts to move. Now I, I keep mentioning that a lot because what we wanna make sure that everybody understands about robotic quilting, robotic quilting isn't just setting points, even though we try to demonstrate it as such, it isn't just setting points and letting it go crazy. You do have to be paying attention to it. And that doesn't, doesn't matter which robotic system you use. So we've done that first row. So we pull up the bobbin thread. And for everybody that was watching yesterday that saw the edge to edge part of the demonstration, we're gonna do the same thing here. So if we look at our tablet screen, we do an overlay, we do a modify, and I will double tap that little X, Delta X box. And that locks it because I know that this design is just a straight offset. And now we turn on trim to the boundary. And by doing that, it will trim to the left, right, and bottom. Press done. And there it's trimmed and we move to the start point. So again, just that simple. There's no magic. The magic comes in, like I keep saying, the magic comes in when we're getting close to these boundaries that we've knocked out. We just pay attention. But I'll be honest, you know, after you wash the first, the first washing, any kind of mistake that you make, you kind of forget about it. But if you're doing quilts for other people and they're picking it up that first time, you want to make sure you're, you've done the best job that you can do. One of the things that you see at when Cubot's quilting here is you just see the precision that is inherent in Cubot. You also see it compared to other autom automated systems. You can see that it's more of an organic movement. So it's, it speeds up and slows down as it's getting into tight areas. We'd like to focus on uh, the precision of the Cubot. So this could be, this is just an applique here. This could also be an embroidery design that you want to not stitch over. All right, it's gonna finish up pretty quickly here now. And then we'll get on to the next thing, which is doing that blanket stitch around the hexagon. One of the things um, that Cubot does very nicely is we have a, an applique stitch or blanket stitch. I mentioned it yesterday, and it can also be used for decorative uh, decorative stitches because we have lots of parameters. We have three parameters that you can tune, but being able to tune the length of the stitch, the stitch width, and whether it's on either side of, of the seam that you're uh, choosing and the angle of those things, you can get some really, really neat effects. So. Let me pull up my bobbin thread again. And you can see there on the needle cam, you can see that the background really does look, let me pull it into frame for you there. Yeah, you can see how nice that looks. So now we're gonna go, we're gonna exit out of our pattern quilting and we'll go into the applique echo quilting. We pay attention to what it says in the upper left, uh, upper left where it says choose quilting area. Now our quilting area is our block. And this 
we choose because this is like the, if we were doing echo all the way to the boundary of the block after we did the applique stitch, we would definitely need this quilting area defined like we did it right here. All it really needs to be is bigger than that hexagon. So the next thing is, is if we look at the upper left, it says applique echo boundary selection. Well, now we select the boundary of our hexagon. So we're gonna select those points like we did before. And I'm gonna go maybe four points per side. It just makes it a little bit nicer to be sure because in the world I live in, nothing, no straight line is ever really straight. And as soon as you quilt a straight line, you find out, yep, it wasn't straight. So we do our best to get along this edge. And again, I'm on this dot here. Don't be looking at this foot in the needle. I'm over here. Having the offset laser pointer is really nice because if I'm sighting down the front of the machine, I get into a kind of a bad posture position uh, to try to see that needle where it's going through the hook. Or I'm sorry, where it's going through the foot. All right, so there we go. We have that done and we're going to say done. Now, if you notice, we're looking at the hexagon on the tablet here. You notice that it's kind of strange in the corners. I really don't like how those stitches are. So I'm going to navigate through and I'm going to change those nodes into an anchor stitch, which automatically turns, makes that stitch go at the bisector of that angle. And I'm just marching through and I'm changing that I, I could have um, selected it as an anchor stitch as I was selecting points, but I like this a lot better. It takes a little bit of time to sew this out. So I'm going to make my width just a hair longer, so 0 0.150 long, and I'm going to make the distance between them a hair longer, say 0 0.375, 3 eighths of an inch. Let's see what that looks like. I think that gets the point across. Now I could, if the next selections I have on the let the on my left hand pane is right now I have it I have right selected, so it is going to stitch on the right side of the line. I could select left, and it stitches on the left hand side. Maybe there is a time when you would like to do that. Maybe in a more decorative uh, situation, we can do symmetric. And also we can do alternating. We can have one side stitch on one side, one stitch on the other. So we're gonna keep it on the right side. And then the, also looking at the top left area, we can change the angle of those stitches. Say we wanted to do 50 degrees. You can see how they've now shifted around. And if I put them symmetric, now they're arrows going around. So you can, you can see that you can do all kinds of neat things that make it look like old uh, crazy quilt type stuff. Anyway, so here we go. I'm going to go back to my right. I'm going to make sure this is at 90 degrees. Say OK and say done and move to the start point. There we go. And press go. You can see on the needle cam here, as it's marching around, it's going and stitching those lines beautifully. Like I was saying yesterday, let me pull up and show you a little bit more detail here. So here we have another applique that has the echo around it. 
this is what we're doing here. We're doing this applique stitch. Let me get it closer. Let me focus here. Make sure we can see that as nice as we can. Okay, there we go. So here you can see we're getting that nice detail in here and those stitches at those corners. And for you sewers out there that are, do this on your sewing machine, you know that that stitch right there, getting that, it can be a bear sometimes. So anyway, let's get us back in focus. If you could, shall we put it back on that camera so I could put, there we go. I think we're on focus there. All right, close enough. All right, so here we have it uh, done on our, done right here on the frame and it looks great. Might be a little difficult to see. But anyway, it looks great. One of the other features, uh, we're gonna exit this. Well, before we exit from the screen, we see this echo button. We can do an echo quilt around this, echo quilting around our hexagon. But I'm gonna show you that on another block. So we'll exit out of here and we'll do applique echo and we'll just do quickly do some echo quilting around this design, which could be an embroidery design. But I quilted this out earlier. And we're gonna choose our quilting area again, which is the outer boundary. And then we'll choose the inner boundary. But we're not gonna do any, we're not gonna do any applique stitching. We're gonna jump right to the echo part. So I'm selecting points that are right on the outer boundary of this design. Say this was an embroidered block in a quilt, and then you had really uh, some high loft batting or two, two layers of batting within the quilt and you wanted to get a little bit of a trapunto effect, this is what you could do. So I've chosen my points. I'm going to skip to echo now. I'm going to choose concentric circles. I'm going to set my offset to a half an inch. I'll do set my number of them to, uh, to actually I want to set to two, for instance and I want to round the corners. So now I'm going to do two layers of echo around that design. It's as easy as just selecting those points, press and go and move to the start point. Pull up the oven again and press go. After this is done, we're gonna get right into line quilting. Line quilting seems like, well, it seems like a simple thing to do. You know, what, what, how complicated can line quilting be? Well, the good news is line quilting is not complicated. The other good news is that you can do lots of cool stuff and lots of designs. Let me continue, I'll do the next echo. You can do lots of neat effects with line quilting and you really, you, you don't need a design. You just have to have a little bit of imagination and you gotta, you gotta just play a little bit. So this will quilt out and then we'll move on to some uh, line quilting to fill up sashing areas. And you won't believe how easy it is and kind of the cool effects that, you know, just pushing a button a couple of times, what you can get. All right. And all of these features came about, they came about from a need as quilters. And when we're doing stuff, it's like, man, we really need to have something that can do this. Well, line quilting is one of those things. So let's go over to our, this, little block over here. I'm going to choose line quilting and I'll choose a closed path. 
And I want to put something in this area right here. Um, it's just a square, two and a half inch square. So let's look. I'm going to set some points. One. I'll go about midway through. Again, you're looking at my red dot. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven and eight. And I have closed path checked on my tablet, so it will automatically close the path. I will say done. And okay, well, I could just quilt those lines. That would be in the ditch stitching. But what happens when I hit the pin cushion button? And I keep hitting the pin cushion button. I keep hitting, I keep hitting. I just keep that going. Well, I don't like that because now if you look on the screen, you see it kind of, that looks pretty cool. And all I have to do is say, okay, move to the start point. Pull up the bobbin thread again. And press go. It's kind of mesmerizing watching this thing work. So just that easy, all I did was select, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, not eight points. I'm, yeah, maybe eight points and hit the pin cushion button four times. And then I made this design. That's incredible. Now, Say I want to continue to use this design in my quilt. I just save the pattern and I call it a uh, cool, if I could spell cool thing and save it. Now that's saved so that when I want to go to my other, other blocks, say the other intersections, if I wanted to continue that, I just pull that design up in pattern quilting, just that easy. Let me pull up the bobbin thread and show you some other neat things. Everybody knows how to draw a five-pointed star. Say I've got this block over here. I got another one over here. Well, let me exit this design and I will go back into line quilting, closed path, and I just want a star in here. So I just set points as if I'm drawing a star with a piece of paper and a pencil. Is that it? There we go. Got a star. Move to start point. So line quilting is a very powerful feature. You, you can do in the ditch stitching. You can see the precision that it's doing it. So if you wanted to do in the ditch stitching, you just select your points along the ditch. And, you know, and like I always say, nothing's ever really perfectly straight in the quilting worlds, but you select points along your ditch and you can do in the ditch stitching just as easy as it did that star. One of the other things that it can do is, which I'll show you here, because I've already quilted this out. I thought we might run a little short on time, but if you come over here, so I did this before, this scallop design right here, this is just line quilting. What I did was I had this, you know, just a sheet of paper, lined paper, and I marked intervals along that line. I set it down on my quilt top like this, and then I selected those points. Click, 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 click. And then I did the pin cushion or the opposite, which was like the pillow uh, button. And it bumped it out like that. I quilted out the first row, saved it, and then did pattern quilting and just kept, kept overlaying and modifying to get that effect. If we have a little bit of time, I'll just get it started over here in this block. Go into line quilting. And this one is an open path because I'm not gonna close 
I'm not going to close the design off. It's not a box. It's just a line. But I'll show it real quick. You select a point. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. That's it. Done. And then all I do is that. That's it. I could make it alternating if I wanted to, make it a sine wave or something. I could keep it symmetric. We could do both sides. But that's all I want to do. Move to start. It's nice how this Moxie moves. Very smooth. And just that simple, we're doing some scallops. So what we do here is pretend, let's pretend that this was an edge to edge quilt or this was an edge to edge. We wanted, you know, we just did that small space, but let's say it was the whole quilt. You can do a clamshell just like we did here. It's the same procedure. When we're done, all we have to do is save the pattern and we'll call it a scallop. It's saved, exit. We'll bring up our bobbin threads. Now we go into pattern quilting to finish this off. Or I'll just show you quickly how we move on to the, to the next row. I'm selecting a boundary. You think I'm going crazy here. And again, I'm choosing it with that laser dot. All the boundary is in Cubot is a way for you to see how you want to place a design in an area. It does very little with that boundary as far as calculation goes. No inner boundary shape. It's now a saved pattern. I'm going to put my scallop in there. I modify it, make sure it's about 100% or so. Say OK. Now I just line it up so that those bottom pieces are in line with. They're in line with the top pieces. It's too short, so I hit the chain button. I hit the trim button so that it trims to the, the correct length. Done. Move to start. All right, I think our time is just about up. We'll get this going though. And if Blaine, Blaine, if there are any questions, any comments? Hey David, hey David, I got one question for you. Somebody's wanting to know, does that do a satin stitch? Does it do a satin stitch? The answer is Correct. yes. Uh, it can do a satin stitch with the applique stitch. And what you do is you, it'll take a long time to do this. I mean, let's, you know, we don't want to say that it's going to be like a satin stitch on your sewing machine where it's going at a thousand RPM and doing a beautiful satin stitch like that. But what it will do is, well, I'll show you. I'll just show you really okay. quick. It's, it's probably easier to show it on the screen than it is to describe it. So say I want to stat satin stitch along a line. Uh, we go to Applique Echo. I'll select, uh, I just need to select an area. This is where the area doesn't matter. Done. And now our boundary here, we're going to just do a two, just a straight little line here. And say done. What we would do, the best we can do for our satin stitch is choose a symmetric. And then we would choose a width, width is fine. We would do it on both sides and our length. We would make, say the, the width of thread, which is maybe 0.01 inches. And you can see that it <clears throat> basically turned that into a black line. That's basically a satin stitch. Um, now, I do have a sample from yesterday. Let me pull it if I can find it. Let me see. Oh, I thought I had one where it was a, 
a flower where I made the, it was a cross hatch and I made the spacing so small that it was basically look like darning. So this would be the equivalent satin stitches of one line. And you could also do an area and use cross hatch fill and make the spacing tiny. And it just looks like, you know, a uniform darning. All right. Very good. Well, hey, David, great demonstration. And I know you're going to be on here again tomorrow.